Hi there, and welcome to 10.6 Consulting. Today we're going to take a look at an example of a good WBS. In this example, you have a contract to deliver a new search feature for a software tool. How might you build a WBS to describe all the deliverables for the contract? First, you start with the project itself. In this example, the project is called ProSearch. So ProSearch is the top level of the WBS. Now you need to think about the different major components needed to develop the new search feature. This would include creating documentation defining the attributes of the new feature. So the first level two element would be definition. Having defined the attributes, design documentation will be required so we can plan what it will look like and how it will operate. The next deliverable is therefore design. Next, the programmers have to write the code and build the new features. The next deliverable would therefore be build. Once the software is built, it will need to be tested and its quality assured. Therefore, a test and QA element is added to the WBS. For this example then, let's assume that level 2 is complete. With all the major deliverables identified for the second level, we now need to see if any of these elements should be broken down further. If so, these elements will be on the third level of our WBS. We decide that definition and design need no further breakdown. However, build has three main areas of deliverable. An interface that the users will interact with, an underlying search engine, and a database connectivity component. These will all fall under the build element and create the third level of our WBS. If these three elements can't be broken down into further major elements, they would constitute the lowest level of WBS for this branch. The skill in building a good WBS is knowing when to stop. You need the WBS sufficiently detailed to give a full account of the main deliverables for the project, but not so detailed that WBS elements start to represent activities at the lower levels of the structure. One way to know that you may have gone down too far is when your WBS element is likely to have only one or two very short duration activities below it. This is not a hard and fast rule, just a guideline. There are plenty of legitimate reasons why you may only have one activity below a WBS element. Just keep in mind that the WBS element should describe the deliverable, and activities are a description of the work required to create that deliverable. Let's say that we broke the interface WBS element into its three logical deliverables, and ended up with search field, search button, and advanced search button elements. Strictly, these are deliverables, so they can be WBS elements. But how many activities might each one need to complete that deliverable? And how long is the work likely to go on for? You should ask yourself if a WBS element this small would have any value to the management team as a summary item, seeing as it likely has only one or two activities below it. Going back to our pro search example, let's look at the WBS with these very low level elements. In this situation, only a few days of coding and one activity are required for these three deliverables. In P6, we can see that the schedule has been broken down to a fourth level of WBS detail below the interface element. Note the total activities and remaining duration columns. Search field, search button, and advanced search button show just one activity below each element, with durations ranging between four and seven days each. Too much detail? Probably. If you compare these elements with the level three elements, they are not very balanced in terms of their number of activities. With just one activity each compared to a minimum of five in the other elements, these WBS elements are unnecessary and add little value to the structure. Therefore, it would be more appropriate to represent these items as activities in the schedule below the interface element, and leave it at that. This will keep the WBS more balanced, and at a level of summarization that will be of greater value to the project team. If you'd like to learn more about Primavera P6, then 10.6 offers some great online training courses.
These courses are written by industry experts and offer you all the skills you need to get up and running as a P6 scheduler. For more information, visit our website at 106.com for full details on how to get started.